I'm Tree, and this is Project Transparency. So this is my new setup. Isn't it shiny? I need a bigger table. Hi, Lane. Oh my god, I can't believe that you actually donated to my Patreon. You're my patron now. That's exciting and weird, yeah? It was extraordinarily kind of you, thank you, especially since I didn't have any of the patron perks or milestone goals or anything up on my patron page. I still don't. That will happen today because now I officially have somebody who I need to be beholden to. See? Now I'm beholden to you. Basically I'm trash. Sorry. But I'm going to post that today, and I'm filming my Patreon intro video thing right after this one. So, so you can find out what your patronage is worth, other than my admiration, affection, and charming personality, which is particularly charming today. The community calendar is basically filled with coal smoke and ember sparks until September, because... August is a break from Definitely to Peer. I am not entirely sure why. I think it has to do with last year. They kind of, at the last moment, asked if people wanted to do August, and nobody could because we had other commitments. And instead of just trying to do it again this year, they decided not to. And then St. Norbert's asked if they would do a September one for... Um, for Parent Visitation Day thing. Parents Weekend. It's called Parents Weekend. <laughs> yes, I went to college, I swear. <laughs> but in September, I'll be back at the Great Harvest Bread Company. So it'll be the last one of the year. If you want to see me and if you want to get things from me in person, you should come then and see me. Really, every time I'm just about to give up on doing this entire thing as kind of spinning my wheels, and an exercise in vanity. People come along who make me feel like it's worth it what I'm doing. And this time it was Brent and Allison. Brent is the head bread head at Great Harvest and Allison is his wife and she went to art school at GB and is a fibers person as well and basically incredibly supportive people who have an idea of how much it costs to make art and their little bit of Laura is in lowest time so once again, my art appeals to small things. Also, and Blaine, you know a little bit about this because of some of the things we were talking about on Facebook, but I have a commission for a t-shirt design for a tour shirt for John Cannon, who wrote The Rise and Fall of Radiation Canary guy asked me to design a shirt for his fictional band. That's cool. We're still at the stage where I need to send him roughs to see if this is still a thing that's going to happen, but just being considered is really exciting for me. And links! All the links in the drawer! There will also be a re review of the rise and fall of Radiation Canary in one of the Project Transparency supplemental book to be haul video things later this week. So, yes. You should watch that when I do it, and then you should read the novel, because representation and really amazing, well-written women and representation, and it feels like what it's like to create and to collaborate and the serendipity that comes with that. So, yeah, it's really exciting. Tangentially connected <laughs> to all of this is I moved out of my art garage studio on Saturday. So, studio is now cleaned and spackled and painted and empty except for my glasses and the stuff I need to get off the table. And I need to shove the tables back against the wall for whoever comes after me. It's, I'm out, it's clean, it's painted, it's spackled. I turn in my keys at the end of the month when I deinstall and I get my deposit check back. So, yes, it's a little, 
a little nerve-wracking. That doesn't mean that I'm done with the art garage. I am, however, taking a little bit of a sabbatical for the next quarter. At the very least, I need a break. They probably need a break from me. So it's going to be good for everybody. It does mean that I'm not sure if I'm doing the next gallery night or not yet. I'll keep you all informed. So this is the wreck that my studio is after moving out of the art garage and having not managed to consolidate anything back together as well as having been putting things together for definitely De Pere. So I have a major reorganization coming up. Yeah, there is going to be an epic reorganization in my future suit. Unfortunately, I think that epic reorganization involves the entire house. I don't want to do that. Lane, you've seen me do this. It is not a fun thing to watch. Okay, maybe it is a fun thing to, for you to watch if you're not, you know, living with me when I'm doing it. When I'm rearranging your environment, it's not fun. When I'm rearranging my environment and you can sit and laugh and mock, it might be fun. If this is something that's going to be entertaining for you, Lane, or for anybody else who watches these things, let me know and I will do a series of reorganizational videos and you can watch me as I slowly become unhinged. It's fun for the whole family. So last week, Lane, you left me a question, which thank you, and please leave me more. I appreciate having an idea of what y'all want to hear about. And you asked me, how do I decide what I make and how is the Paper Towns project going? The Paper Towns project is kind of at a standstill, kind of halted while I'm doing the reorganization of my studio because as you saw from the video clip, I don't have a whole lot of room to work right now. So it has to wait until the reorganization is done. Apropos of nothing, I kind of spent some time with Photoshop and did see some designing of labels and yeah, I, I think they came out really well. There is a graphic designer in me yet. As to how I decide what I work on, that's kind of tricky because sometimes I don't have a choice what I work on. Sometimes what's in my head will not let me not work on it. And that's exciting and exhilarating and exhausting and frustrating all at the same time. Sometimes it's because I can't work on what I want to work on, so I have to work on something else. And you've seen this with me, Lane. It's like some sort of artistic version of overpreening. If I don't work on something, I will preen myself to a state of artistic despair. But if I find something else to work on, I'll still be irritated and molting. This metaphor has gotten really weird, but I'll be okay. Sometimes I just need to do something. Sometimes I have to just work on something and it doesn't matter what I, I work on. I just pick up a pencil or a paintbrush or a hammer and I go to town and sometimes I can use it and sometimes I can't. You remember this lane. You know just how full of things it is. Things that want to be worked on and some things that will never make the light of day. I don't know if that's helpful, especially when some things wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning and demand to be worked on, and other things languish in pages of books never to be made. And now that I have totally made myself sad, I'm going to go work on those other videos. Leave me thoughts, Sugar Cube, and again, thank you for being my patron. The knot wall continues apace. And Lane, this is actually for you because I thought you would like to, you know, see quality construction at its most cheap labor.